Stopping power, one of the most crucial aspects of an iron fitting here at Second Swing. We're going to tell you everything you need to know and why it's important. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Maholder, Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter here at Second Swing at Minnetonka. Today we're in the tour van talking about stopping power. Um, so of course, when you have an iron fitting here at Second Swing, our club fitters are closely looking at stopping power, like landing angle and height are a couple of the key metrics that are looked at there, and why is that important? And so Thomas, I know you're, like you just told me, I mean, this is the, one of the most important things in every iron fitting, uh, making sure golfers are getting the ball high enough and the ball can stop quickly and efficiently on the green. And so um, just off the bat here, just maybe give us an in inclination of why it's so important and why you put so much of an emphasis on it. Yeah, I mean, first off, if you are not, if your fitter is not focusing on height and landing angle in an iron fitting, we have problems. Yeah. So it is one of the most important things because I can give you distance in an iron if I want to. I can give you a game improvement iron. I can jack the loft up as much as I want. If you, all you want is distance, but that's total distance. Yeah. We want carry distance. We want to be able to get that ball up in the air. We want to be able to stop on the green. Some players are going to be having issues with stopping power if that ball is coming in too shallow to the green. Yeah, and so one of the kind of points of contention maybe out there is iron lofts now. So you're kind of seeing the trend in the golf industry. Um, iron lofts are becoming more and more strong, uh, kind of you know, decreasing what used to be, what, 35, 36, maybe the standard iron loft. And it's kind of almost dropping into the 20s now for some game improvement sets. And so um, while that does add some distance, uh, if you don't have enough swing speed, that can drop your height and your landing angle and cause some problems that way. Yeah, and there's also golfers at the other end of the spectrum too. They may spin the ball too much. They may hit the ball too high. Mm -hmm. So that's why sometimes a power spec loft is not a bad option to try and bring that spin rate down and then get them in a more optimal window for their seven iron too. So there's positive and minuses to distances and to ch changing the lofts up. Ping does a really good job. So Ping actually have three different loft options with their irons. They have their power spec loft, which is a stronger loft. They have the standard loft, and they also have the retro spec loft. I, a lot of times, will fit a player into a retro spec loft, especially if I'm fitting them into a more game improvement iron, because we still want that height. We still want that spin and we want that landing angle. It's not all about total distance. It's about carry distance. It's about stopping power and landing angle. That is more important. I'm more focused on where that ball is going to land on the green. Is it gonna stop in time? Some grains mm -hmm. are not big enough. Some courses you may play may only be 20 yards long. The ball rolls out 20 yards, good luck stopping that ball right. on the green. Absolutely, so Thomas, you're gonna hit some shots for us today. Um, can you kind of explain the format maybe of this test today and kind of how you're gonna show the importance of stopping power? Yeah, so I have actually chosen the Ping G425, the power spec loft. So the power spec loft is 28 and a half degrees. The standard loft of a Ping G425 is 30. And then as I mentioned, the retro spec is actually like 32.3 degrees of loft on it. So there's a range. But we're gonna go to a club that's gonna have less loft on it. And we're also gonna compare a little more cavity back iron. So you're holding the Ping I210. The loft on that one, the standard loft's 33 degrees. So I'm gonna hit some shots from, with 70 mile an hour club speed, 80 mile an hour club speed, and 90 mile an hour club speed with the seven iron. And we're gonna show the differences between these two iron heads. All right, perfect. Well, you ready to hit some shots here? Let's do it. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> exactly 70. Okay. It's like I haven't even been on break or anything like that. It's like that's your normal club speed. <laughs> I mean, you can see even that slow. So right now it's you're kind of you're in the mid stopping power range. Yeah. All right, well Thomas, you've hit your 10 shots here at 70 miles an hour, um, which I would imagine fits kind of, you know, a decent amount of, of golfers that maybe are watching this video. So, um, seven iron at 70 miles an hour, and you can see the big differences here in terms of like a, a strong lofted game improvement iron and then maybe a more player's cavity in terms of spin and height. Um, 
I mean, what do you what do you see from these numbers here, Thomas? I mean, normally I'd say every degree of loft is about three yards. So we we're separating here by what four and a half degrees of loft. Yeah. Uh, we'll notice that the distance there, total distance is going about 14 yards further. So it's pretty close. Yeah. But if we take a look at that carry distance there, it's not quite as far separated. Mm -hmm. It's because loft is helping us get the ball up in the air with the slower swing speed. Mm -hmm. It was actually 69 and a half miles an hour on average for five shots with both of them. So it's the exact same club speed. Yeah. Um, if we take a look there, you can see that more ball speed with Less loft on the golf club, that's, that's kind of a given there. But check out that launch angle. So that launch angle was launching three degrees higher, at the same exact club speed because I had more yep. loft on the uh, on I-210. And you can kind of see there that the dynamic loft was, was it 4.4? 4.4. 4 4.4, I said 4.5, right? So we're Almost perfect, essentially, with regards to being robotic comparing the two lofts, because yep. the, the dynamic loft there has changed by about the same amount of mm -hmm. stated loft on the golf club. So then the big yeah. numbers here are going to be landing angle and height that we're going to talk about a lot. And so, yep. you know, I got the ping seven iron landing angle chart right in front of me here. And so at, you know, at your speed of just under 70 miles an hour, I'm looking at here, and it's kind of got you in that mid stopping power range. Um, where your landing angle is, you know, about, I mean, with the G425 to 32, it's kind of on the low end of the mid stopping power. And then you kind of on the high end of that category with the I210. So, um, you know, that's, I mean, that's the key here, right? Is the loft, especially at this swing speed, the strong loft is going to get you some distance, but yep. the sacrifice is going to be the height and the landing angle. Yeah, and if it was going to be fitting a golfer into a more game improvement iron, if you wanted a little extra height and a little mm -hmm. more spin, we've got that retro spec. We know that the Ping G425 retro spec, seven irons, 32.3. So it's pretty close to what the I210 would be with regards to the, those mm -hmm. numbers. It's important because it's not all about, all about total distance. Right. I mean, speaking on that total distance, you can kind of see that I did hit the ball 14 yards further, but I'm more focused on that landing angle, that height flew 12 feet higher. Yeah. Uh, the dynamic loft was higher, the landing angle was seven degrees higher, and this is only at 70 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. I'm going to expect probably a little bit larger range and we swing a little bit faster there too. All right, well let's just get to 80 miles an hour then. All right. Well, Thomas, 80 miles an hour, you've just hit your 10 shots. Um, you know, in, in a general fitting, I think 80 miles an hour does fit maybe a lot of golfers that you fit or a large percentage of them. But when you're in an iron fitting, numbers at landing angle height, what are you trying to get to? I mean, 45 degrees is a great number. If I can get a golfer with their seven iron to get their landing angle to be at least 45 degrees, they get their landing angle, their stopping power will be so much better. So I'm always looking at 45 degrees with mm -hmm. the seven iron. As the club gets longer, so four iron, five iron, it's going to be a little harder to keep that club, that landing angle up as well. So this would be another topic, but that's where we would consider hybrids for those golfers right. there too, that are slow enough swing speed, because they're designed to get that ball to spin a little bit more, or even like a higher lofted berry wood, like yeah. a seven wood or a nine wood. We've done some content on that. We need to get that ball up in the air so the ball can, can stop. Right, exactly. Yeah. Because another thing to consider is, you know, the average, what would you say the average green lengthwise is what like 20 to 30 yards maybe depending on the course you might have some golf courses with larger greens some with smaller but about 30 yards I'd say is probably the average size of green where you have to actually land the ball on the green and keep it there right yep it's probably 25 to 30 yards yeah, yeah. I would say a lot of golf course it, it really depends on the golf course that you play because yeah. some courses are going to be a lot shallower the way they're designed and some greens are going to be huge complexes yeah but generally speaking those huge complexes are going to be firmer greens if the greens mm -hmm. are firm Right. Then that adds another piece into the puzzle there too. Right. Because you know, then stopping power is going to be even harder because you need to make sure you have spin and that height so the ball can right. come down and stop. Exactly. So when we look at these numbers here for terms of stopping power. So stopping power, the way I look at it anyway is, you know, kind of the difference between carry and total distance, right? Yep. So uh, what I'm referring to is if there is a front pin on a, on, you know, a, a hole that you're trying to get to, uh, your best bet might just be 
get the ball on the green and then let it roll out, you know, 20 to 30 feet past and hope yep. for the best, you know. I'm um, usually, when I hit seven iron, stuff and pals usually around about eight to nine yards mm -hmm. is kind of what, what I'm at. Um, depends on a lot of things. Depends on the spin a little bit. Yeah. Depends on the height. But generally speaking, with a seven iron in my hand, it's around about eight yards is, okay. the, is the difference. So you're okay. seeing here, we got, we can look at the numbers here briefly, but um, with G425 and the power spec at 80 miles an hour, you can see how it was about 14 yards there of difference, and then the I210, nine yards. So able to control that ball a little bit better. Now, there is a big difference in distance, right? So yep. the golfer that at 80 miles an hour, if they're looking for more distance, um, they, you know, sometimes they might look at the power spec of G425, and that's a, that's a lot of distance, actually, for an 80 mile an hour, seven mm -hmm. iron, to go 191 total yards. But then the other thing to consider, of course, is how fast that ball would stop on the green. Yeah, I mean, that spin rate by 1,000 RPM difference right yeah. there, that's going to change the, the total distance and also that, that carry and, and stopping power there, too. Mm -hmm. but speaking of that stopping power, we were under that 45 degree mark when I was hitting the G425 yep. power spec. It was better, so it was definitely better than the 75, 70 mile an hour category, but 47.8, the height close to 100 feet in the air was, was pretty good with the I, I210. Yeah, so you yeah. Could, you're seeing the, you know, there's obviously benefits to having a stronger loft on an iron, but there's also benefits to having weaker loft um, in terms of stopping power, getting the ball high enough in the air for you. So, yep. uh, 90 miles an hour now. This is gonna not gonna fit a ton of golfers, but we're gonna just see how much of a difference that is here. If you have four or five degrees of difference in loft, how much that can play. So, you ready to swing pretty fast here with a seven iron? Let's see if I can get there. Thomas, 90 miles an hour now. Uh, that's a lot of effort and force being applied to a seven iron, but pretty good test here. And um, I gotta say, you know, to stop the ball within five yards, which is what you're doing with the I-210, that's, that could be a big bonus depending on the conditions, of course. Um, on a calm day, that could be a big benefit to somebody. Yes, but it also could be a little too much. This is seven iron. Imagine if I had pitching wedge in my hand and if I was gonna swing fast with a pitching yeah. wedge, that thing might come backwards. Yeah. Oh, I don't like to spin the ball backwards, especially with a nine iron or, or a pitching wedge. Right. Uh, so I wanted to stop you know, re reasonably quick, but it's pretty impressive stopping power. You even mentioned it's kind of off the charts on that, right. on that ping chart with that, with I was that landing say angle. That. Yeah. yeah. So the, the landing angle chart here for now, you're at 90 miles an hour, so it's got the range of 90 to 100, but the landing angle kind of in the high stopping power category is 47 to 51. And so if we we're gonna look at the I-210, I mean, you're, you're over, well over off the charts, I guess. Yep. And then the, the G425 power spec is actually up there too. So um, you're seeing the differences there. So really, I think what this is, the 90 mile an hour thing is, it's almost a, you know, there's too much stopping power in a, in a way, where if you get a windy day out there, hitting it that high, it can be a problem. So you might want less stopping power uh, but if you're lower in the club speed category, you're going to probably want more just to make sure that you're, uh, the ball is behaving when it lands the way you want it to. It's also kind of interesting too, even though I was swinging faster than I normally would with the 7 iron. I'm normally around about 88 miles an hour with my 7 iron, which also has more loft on it, by the way, than the, the I-210. Yeah. I-210 wasn't really going any further because it was so high and yeah. so spinny mm -hmm. that I actually didn't hit the ball any further at all than my current numbers with my own seven yeah. iron. So you'd think more distance. Now we did see it went further with the G425 right. because the spin rate was a thousand RPMs less there again. Um, but it's kind of interesting. You, the faster you swing, the more the ball is going to spin. It's just not going to go as far. Right. So swing smooth. It's not all about distance with your irons. And that's no. an important takeaway. It's not all about total distance. It's carry distance and it's consistent distance every single yeah. time. It's getting the ball as close to the hole as possible. And so Having the right amount of stopping power is going to help you do that. Whether it's you're a fast swinger and you need to actually decrease that, or whether you're a pretty a slower swinger, maybe average swinger, and that landing that stopping power isn't quite what it needs to be. Um, but of course, you know you get these numbers, get this data in that second swing in a tour van fitting, and you're going to see all this insight on in your game and see where you're at with your stopping power. Because again, like we talked about, getting the ball close to the hole 
it's not just about your total distance because sometimes maybe the ball is protected or the, the hole is protected by a bunker, by a rough, and you can't just roll it up there as you can here on the TrackMan fairway. So um, this is some good stuff, Thomas, and a lot of info that golfers could take away here. Yeah, I think also you mentioned getting the ball close to the hole. So we've got to bring up, we've got to compare the dispersion numbers with yeah. them because we're swinging the same speed with both clubs. So first off, let's talk about the green versus the orange circle there. I-210, when I was swinging at 90 miles an hour, was probably one of the smallest circles uh, up there of all of them. You can see the G425, yeah. that orange circle, it was the largest. So you swing fast with a game improvement iron, it's gonna be wide yeah. if, you, if you miss hit a little bit. And even, you know, I'm a good player and you can kind of see how that dispersion pattern from left to right got a lot larger. If you take a look at the other comparisons there, you can kind of see that I was hitting the ball straighter with the I-210 than I was with the uh, G425 at all speeds. Yep. So sometimes it's not always yeah. about jacking up your golf clubs, trying to hit the ball far. Mm -hmm. It's the ball going the right distance for you and straight yeah. more consistently. Absolutely, yeah, that's, uh, that's the key. And so when you, irons are about precision more than anything, making sure you can set yourself up with good chances to score well. So Thomas, this was a lot of great information here. Stopping power is obviously important as we showed today. Thanks for hitting all the shots. Uh, be able to range your speed, by the way, in that, you know, precisely from 70, 80, 90, that's, that's a good skill. So um, <laughs> thanks for doing all that. And I think the golfers will like this one. Not a problem.